should you try to get your customers to like you when you're out giving them a quote so therefore they want to hire you they want to give you money versus somebody else and it's called building rapport establishing rapport and r-a-p-p-o-r-t report look it up it means that you find common ground with a customer and in this video specifically I want to talk about one very powerful thing I've learned and it's taken me years to figure this out and it's the opposite of what I just said and it depends all right what's up I'm Keith Kelfus and on this YouTube channel I talk about how to go from zero or startup to taking your landscaping lawn care business up to a hundred thousand in revenue and with this one very important thing can shave a lot of time and energy off of um, your journey and I want to know in the comments below about your successes and what's going on because I, I really I hope you're crushing it I see a lot of guys and girls in this community doing a lot of great things and I'm super super happy and excited one quick um, quick announcement the GIE Expo is coming up it's the biggest landscaping green industry event in the country in Louisville Kentucky every single year right around October 20th 22nd I'll put a link in the description below you can get 50% off your tickets if you sign up and get your tickets through my link below so check that out but anyway without any further ado all right now I used to in my first few years of my business I would uh, jump around my customers and placate to them during quotes and I would do everything I would could possibly do to get them to like me to see that I was a good guy and I had a good heart and I was a good honest moral likable trustworthy guy and I'm just getting married and and, 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 and support me in my business and then I would bend over backwards and do phenomenal work what we all, we do anyways but I would go too far to try to become friends with the customers so they so there's a bond and that bond um, although I felt it was very real and it was coming from a genuine place, you want your customers to know you, to know you like you, and trust you. <laughs> the truth is that you can establish just as much credibility with your customers by just being professional and never speaking anything about yourself, not trying to get them to like you at all, and just being there in an in a attitude of service for them as a service provider and a professional and you have nothing but structure and it has clearly defined rigid edges and boundaries you are there as a professional and you answer all their questions and they can just tell by the way you resonate whoa you're the guy for the job right without ever having to build any of that credibility. Now you might actually if you're trying too hard to get your customers to like them or you talk too much to them or you're you're too nice you might actually push some customers away and be annoying to them I think I've probably been annoying to some of my customers because you're trying too hard right and when you're when you're not needy at all when you get to the point where you don't need the money anymore you've got too many customers coming in you finally got money in the bank your business is established you get to that point where you're now you've reversed it you become what um, Dan Sullivan uh, author and founder of strategic coach check him out on audible.com I put a link below for Audible. Dan Sullivan he says, "Always be the buyer. Whether you're selling something or not, you act as if though you're the buyer. You're the one who's selective. In what type of customers you deal with." And let me give you an example. I have uh, some customers. For instance, the husband is like a lawyer. He's a very masculine lawyer. When I mean masculine, it just I t I'm, that state of consciousness refers to that of not so emotional. Or colorful just in a state of pure objectivity objectivity you're just seeing the world around you spatially as that of data where the more feminine is lights and colors and emotions and feelings and stuff like that right and you can be masculine and feminine it doesn't matter what sex you are what body you're in you can have all those traits and some of the the greatest and most powerful people who have uh, become even the most successful have some both of those characteristics I won't go too deep into this but there's first second third and fourth fourth stage and that is of pure spirituality when you can have masculine and feminine traits both and be able to communicate with people and ebb and flow in a way that serves them serves them where they're at right now whether you feel like it or not that's that's a very powerful place to be right um, and that doesn't mean that it's easy but but what I mean is sometimes you could just 
Um, for instance, here's a great example. Let's say you have a customer. Let's say you're a man, you're, you're a landscaper, you're a guy, and you have a customer who's a lady, and she has, uh, she loves the flowers, and she's so artistic, and she has all these emotions, and she wants it to be like this. See that, right? Um, now let's just say you were purely in your masculine. You didn't start doing all this stuff, and oh yeah, we can do anything, we can make, yeah. You know, you're just chilling. Yes. I understand. We can do that. Nope, nope. We can't do that. You might have to find someone else for that. We don't specialize in that. Now, in the beginning of your business, you might be afraid to say you can't do something, right? Or if you're you got a customer, let's say it's a it's a it's a it's a man who is like uh and he has a very masculine role as far as like uh I mean, he's like a lawyer. He's like he's like a, a an engineer, right? Purely data and objectivity. If you just stand in truth, sometimes you might be afraid that you'll break rapport. You will break the building of this relationship of the bond you're trying to get with your customer uh, by by telling them that there's something they're asking you to do, and you say, "Oh, I can't do that. We don't trim trees above this height." Or we don't, we can't clean gutters like that. Or we actually, we don't do hardscape construction. Or we don't plant that stuff. Whatever, whatever it is. Oh, that's not my expertise. I can do all this though. Now, in the beginning of the business, you might be afraid, and you might say, "Uh, yeah, we can do that," and then go and figure it out. And I like that, and I appreciate that, and that's the hustle. That's cool if you can go. <coughs> excuse me, if it's not too risky, you can actually go and figure that thing out and open up a whole new source of revenue and now that's how you do it. That's how you learn how to do things. And if it's something that's not an irreversible decision that doesn't, is not gonna break you or the business or your integrity with the client, sure, you're gonna learn all types of new things. But what I'm saying is not being afraid to say no, right? When you can hear no and speak no, Hear no and say no with no residue. That's when you are in equanimity. Right? That's when you have healthy boundaries. So you might think that if you say uh, no to a customer or say you can't do something, that all of a sudden it's going to cost you the job. Right? Well, the opposite might be true, and it might actually qualify your and make you even more credible that you're honest with enough with the customer to say, "Hey, I, I don't know how to do that," or "I don't know." Here's another thing. So let, let me underline that one more time. If you can say, I don't know, I don't know, and not say anything else. Nothing else, that's powerful. Now if you say, I don't know, but I can find out for you. Now you've just created uh, a verbal contract or a trust between you and the customer saying that, oh, now you have, now you're actually if you're gonna do work with them, you're gonna to have to go figure that thing out and get all the answers and the research and give them some type of piece of qualified information because you told them that you were gonna do it. Now, if that's what you're in the business of doing and you like doing that, fine. But how many customers are you saying, yes, I'll find out, I'll get this for you, I'll jump over that hoop, I'll pick this, oh, don't worry, I'll do this thing for free? Because what you're doing is you're working for free. Every time you tell a customer that I'll go find that thing out for you, Unless it's something that you are actually going to get paid on, compensated for, you're actually just doing more free work. So if you can stand in your truth and just say, I don't know. Okay, if the customer says, oh, what about this too and this and that? Well, if you're going to get paid for it, you can do the thing. But if the customer wants to do it or they want to bring the plants and you'll install them or they want it, like, it could be one of a million things. It could be many multiple things. We have been trained in the world of transactional business and commerce, which is, I could even go as far as saying it's adversarial. We have been trained to push the burden off on the other person. This is when you deal with companies, insurance companies, all type of stuff. People will give you just enough information to make you have to go and do all the work and pay them to make, to make the end meet. They're always pushing, it's kind of like the proverbial, it's a bad, uh, put, putting the turd on another man's plate. They're, people are always putting the turd on your plate. Now there's a difference between if they're paying you for a service, but also pushing burden off on you. 
And so when you have a customer that is requesting too much of you and they want to keep making changes and they can't make up their mind and they're in the selfish state of uh, consumerism where they're not even considering you, the contractor, as a human being who has important time, energy to conserve, a family, all those things, and they keep changing their mind, well, th I think that there should be some type of cost associated with that or you should back up because if you keep saying yes, 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 whatever you want, now you're getting sucked in all these rabbit holes and all these trails and all these mazes and all these emotions that are gobbling up your time all the way to the point where three, four, five years goes by and you're still in the same spot and you don't know why and you're pulling your hair out. It's because you're not aware, you're not aware that even though you can build rapport with your customers, even though you can be cool with your customers and you can serve your customers at a high level and they might even like you, they're not your friends. Only your friends or your family should you you know, bend over backwards to the point where uh, of detriment or doing things for free and stuff like that. In the world of commerce and transactional business, you might be a really nice guy. You might really care. You might treat their properties like it's your own. That's beautiful. It's a great thing. That's how you get tons of positive five-star reviews and you build a business off the blood, sweat, and tears off. And that's also how you grow a backbone. But what I'm saying is if you do it to the point of your own detriment, stick around in the business for a few years and see what happens time and time and time and time and time and time again you will realize that when the day comes that you need to raise your prices because maybe you want to take your life to the next level maybe you have missions and mandates and things that are very important to you that you need to start stepping up to the plate and doing in your life which is going to require you to not be running around like a chicken that with your head cut off um, doing everything and not getting paid for your time and for your worth. These customers that you work for live in nice homes, they drive nice cars, they go on vacations, right? I'm not saying they're perfect. Nobody's perfect. But what I'm saying now when it's time for you to grow up and it's time for you to become established and, and have your roots in the ground and put your flag in the ground and have your foundation and you have to raise your prices. See, see what those customers that you've bent over backwards for all these years, see how many of them stick around when you raise your prices. Because I've seen it. I'm seasoned. They're not your friends. They will drop you like a bad habit. They'll drop you. They'll cancel. And see how much they really support you. Unless they're your real friends and they're your real family who loves you and they'll be with you through thick and thin. Some of the customers do stick around, but don't be afraid to relax a little and step back and say, whoa, 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 whoa. Customer, your problem here right now on your property, this whole problem that's a big deal to you, I can solve it or solve part of it for this amount of compensation, but I'm definitely not gonna make your problem my problem. And you have to cut up the problem. It's like, it's like, <laughs> Basically, you're a business owner and the main part of business aside, unless it's a passion that you have and you want to do, you, do change the world, it, it's, it's to make a profit. And I don't know what side of the fence you grew up on, but I grew up dirt poor. And I was told as a kid growing up that rich people are crooks, rich people are evil. Rich people did something wrong to get to where they're at. So I've had to fight through all this this type of guilt and remorse around making money that is, I'm really, I'm sick of it. And even to speak with this tone of voice, oh, you better watch out, Kelfis, you better watch out, something bad might happen to you. You start making good money, you're taking advantage of it. And I've literally had people come in the comments of my videos where I'll be giving prices like years ago, I make a video, half the comments are, Oh my God, this guy's a ripoff. He's a scam artist. How dare he charge that much? This guy is a scam artist. And then literally the other half of the comments in the same exact video. Oh my God, this guy needs to raise his prices. Oh my God, he's destroying the industry. Why are his prices so low? Same video. Totally different perceptions. So be careful who uh, you surround yourself with, who you're listening to. And that's why... Everybody's right. If you subscribe to Ken Wilbur and Cosmic Consciousness, the integral form of consciousness is that 
in some form, everybody's actually right from where they're at and what lens they're looking through. From where they're at and what lens they're looking through, you're right. And I, I found a compass that's helping me. As long as in your heart you feel good about, like there's there's a type of, there's a feeling of, it's a righteous, uh, uh, you feel in an alignment and integrity with your decisions and your feelings uh, as far as like, hey, this isn't going to be $800, this is going to be $1,250, 12, right? And if, and if when you send that quote, that's $400 more than what you used to charge, but you know in your heart why you need to which charge what you need to charge, and you're, you're tracking your finances, and you're keeping good books, and you understand, as long as you know it's good, it's good for you, it's going to allow you to serve the customer at a high level, and it's aligned, it, it, it's it's okay, you know, and the funniest thing is, is when you stand in integrity, I think you're standing out of integrity when your prices are too low, because now you're out of integrity with yourself. When the last person to get paid is you, and you're still living in a, in a crummy little place, and you've been working your tail off for a long time, and it's still not coming together for you, and you still don't have any savings in the bank, and you're still stressing about money, and you've been doing this long enough, how long do you need to keep doing that, right? How long are you gonna be afraid until you get sick and tired of being afraid anymore? So there is a period where you have to get upset and you have to get sick and tired before you move up to the next level. So if you feel really frustrated right now, uh, you know, extremely frustrated, that means that you're probably growing. That's good because now you're being stretched. Anyways, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much. If you like, if you like hit the subscribe button, share this video with anybody you think would find value from it. If you're brand new in the landscaping business, check out my landscaping business startup course. It's only $37. It'll teach you how to get a landscaping business off the ground. Literally, it's a powerful course. It'll be in the description below, landscaping business startup course. If you've already been in the business for a couple years and you need help marketing your business, I have an online course called the Business Marketing Blueprint. It'll literally teach you how to get tons of positive five-star reviews, how to market your business, customer psychology, demographics. It's a really, really bad to the bone course. It's Keith Kelfis dot com forward slash bmb business marketing blueprint i'll put that in the link in the description below uh, as well and um i'll see you soon my friend